In this lesson, I will show you how you can add effects to layers in After Effects and we will take a look at a few effects that are available to add a bit of color to our layout. So let's begin by closing all the properties that are open here now. I select the first layer, I hold down Shift and select the last one and then I simply close these tabs here just to keep this a little bit more organized. Now let's take a look how we can add effects in After Effects. If you want to add an effect to a layer, you have to select this layer first. So let's select our background layer. Now you can come up here to effects and in the effects menu point you see that we have a lot of different options here and a lot of effects are available in After Effects. And we will not go through all of these because this is simply not possible in one course. You see that along in the color correction we have, I don't know, 20, 25 or 30 effects, didn't count them. And then you see distort and yeah. After Effects has really, really a lot of effects to offer. We will take a look at important effects. We will play with many of these effects in lessons to come. For now, we'll concentrate on a few simple effects. If you see some effects in my panel here that are not available in your After Effects, for example, like the Red Giant here or Trap Code or also this Video Copilot tab here, don't be surprised. These are third-party plugins and I purchased them and I installed them so maybe your effects look a little bit different but for this course we will only use effects that ship with the standard installation of After Effects. So to apply an effect now to our background layer let's go to generate and let's choose the gradient ramp effect. If you're following this course with an older version of After Effects, I think uh, CS5 or everything before CS6, then this effect is not called Gradient Ramp, it is called Ramp. So make sure that you select either the Ramp or the Gradient Ramp effect and just click it. And now you see our background color changed. And you see one more thing that After Effects now added our Effect Controls panel right here. We already saw this panel in our video about the After Effects workspace. So before we do anything here, let's drag out our effect controls panel and let's snap it right to the left of our composition window so that this is visible all the time because we will use this quite a bit. Now let me reposition my keyboard window here. And now let's take a look how we can manipulate the effects. You can either manipulate the effect inside the effect controls panel, but you can also change the effect properties directly in the timeline panel. So let's open this up now and you see additionally to our standard transform properties that we have here, let's close them, we also have this effects tab here and this is only visible if effects are applied to this layer. So let's open this up and you see here I have my gradient ramp and if I open this one up too then you see that I have exactly the same properties down here as I have up here in my effect controls panel. So it doesn't really make any difference at which panel or which window you use to change the properties. Most of the time I use the effect controls panel because it's a little bit easier to make changes right here. When I'm animating then I most of the time use my timeline panel. You can access effects on a layer by selecting the layer and pressing E on your keyboard. So this is also a very handy keyboard shortcut. Now let's come up here to our gradient ramp and let's create a nice gradient for our background layer. Therefore what I want to do is I want to solo my layer. So this is a new function that I didn't show you so far and this is called the solo button. If I click this here now and activate it, you see that After Effects will make all the others invisible, all the other layers, and we only can see our background. Now let's come up here to our gradient ramp and select our gradient ramp effect. And you see if I select this effect here then some things change. For example these two little handles, if you can see them right here, appear. If I deselect it they go away. So some of these effects have special controls that are available in the composition window. Let's first of all change from a linear ramp to a radial ramp because I want to create a radial ramp. And now let's grab this little handle up here and make sure that your effect is selected and let's drag this to the middle of our composition. If you want to be accurate you can come in here and then type in 960 which is actually still here and then you can change this to 540 just to make sure that this is exactly in the middle of our composition. Now you see that down here we have a second handle and the second handle is the end of the ramp position and if I 
grab this and drag it out here. See that now this ramp gets a little bit bigger and this is exactly what I want. So let's, let's drag this somewhere around here. Don't have to be accurate here. Okay, let this go. Now we can change a few colors here. So let's come in here and let's change the start color. The start color is the one right here in the middle, as you see, the black one. And let's change this from black to something like a very dark violet color. I want the background to be really dark because I want the, the foreground elements to be glowing later on. So let's make this really dark, like so. So let's click OK here. So now let's change the end color here. Let's click on this color box here and let's make this fully black. Actually, it doesn't really matter if you want full black, whether it's here or it's here. You see the only thing that changes here is the saturation value, but for black this makes really no difference at all. So you can choose whatever corner you want. And you see now we have a really very dark background. Maybe I will come in here and change this later on a little bit, but for now we will leave it. Now we can click our solo switch again to make all the other layers visible again. Okay, so far so good, we created our first effect on our background layer. Now let's take a look at another option how we can apply effects to layers. Let's select our watercolor stain one PSD layer and let's right click on this layer. When you right click you see that a bunch of options appear, but what we are interested right now is this one and this is the effects tab. And you see that we can access all the effects through this option here that are also available in our application menu. So let's add an effect and let's go to the Generate tab and let's select the Fill effect this time. The Fill effect is a very simple effect that will just fill a layer with a certain color. Now I do not want to specify a color using our color controls here, so I cancel this. What I want to do now is I want to feature a color of one of my layers here. So let's select this eyedropper tool here and with this eyedropper tool you can sample colors. So let's come in here to our logo and if you take a look at the info panel right here and if I move my eyedropper tool here now through my composition you see that it will always change and display the colors that you are currently featuring or that you're currently sampling I should say. And now you can just choose the color that you want to sample. And let's say in this case I want to sample the color that is right here on the A, on the, the brighter color here. And let's click and now you see After Effects samples the color and our watercolor stain has now the same color as our logo here. Okay, now let's take a look on another option how to add effects to layers and therefore let's select our Splatter 03 video layer. And let's come over here to our effect and presets window. Let's make this a little bit bigger that you can see what I'm doing here. Inside our effects and presets, you see that we have also exactly the same menu points here as in our application menu right here and as in our right click menu right here. So this is another option to access all the effects available in After Effects and additionally to all the effects that are available we also have this little uh, point here that's called animation presets and here you can enter a bunch of animation presets. We will take a look at animation presets a little bit later. Now let's concentrate on our effects here. If I want to apply an effect to my layer I could come in here now. Let's, let's open up the color correction for now and let's choose for example the tint effect. And if you want to use the tint effect, then you can simply drag it on your layer. So let me delete this effect for now because I want to show you another option how you can add it. And therefore I simply select it and then I press delete on my keyboard. And this is how you can delete effects from your layers. So if you do not want to navigate through all of these panels here and search your effects, if you know what effect you're searching, you can come in here and simply type in the name. So in this case, I want to search the tint effect. And now you see if I type in tint, then After Effects will filter all the effects available and I can access it very quickly. So this is actually the method that I use most of the time to search and apply my effects. But therefore, of course, you have to know the name of the effect that you are searching for. Let me explain one more little thing and I want to explain these two icons that are visible right here. So let's delete this tint here to make all the effects visible and let's open up our color correction effects to take a look at the different icons that we have here and what they mean.
You see that some of them have this 16 in here, then there are some that have 8, and the other ones have 32. I hope that you already watched the After Effects Preferences video lesson. In this one we already talked about the bit settings of compositions, and these numbers just show you that the effects are compatible, for example, with 8-bit settings, 16-bit settings, or 32-bit settings. You can use effects that are working in 8 bits in a 32-bit project, but then you will not get the high-end results. As we are working in an 8-bit project, but you can take a look here, it really doesn't matter, so we can use all effects without worrying about any quality issues. The second icon that you can see here means that this effect is supported by the GPU acceleration. So the effects that have this second icon here, you see this is the brightness and contrast, the hue and saturation and a few others, and also the tint one, they actually are supported by GPU acceleration. So if you have one of the NVIDIA CUDA cards, so these effects will render a lot faster. Okay, enough of boring explanations. Let's type in tint here again. Let's select our tint effect and let's drag it on our splatter movie layer. With a tint effect, you can specify a certain color for the black values in your image or in your video, and you can specify a certain color for the white values. In our splatters, we have no black values because it is only white with an alpha channel. So we can simply change the map white to color here. So let's come in here, let's feature another color with our eyedropper tool. So let's feature the same color as we used before for our watercolor stain. And that there's a little bit of a variation in here, I will come in here now to my watercolor stain one, and I want to change this color here a little bit, make it a little bit more saturated, just like so, a little bit darker and more saturated. Okay, perfect. Now I want to show you how you can copy an effect. So let's say I want to use the fill effect also on my second watercolor stain here. So I simply come in here to my watercolor stain layer one and come to my effect controls panel, or I could do the same down here, pressing E and selecting the fill effect right here. Then you can press Ctrl and C on your keyboard to copy something. You can also come up here with this still selected, of course, to edit and go to copy. And then you select the layer that you want to copy the effect to, and you can press Ctrl V, or you can come in here and go to Edit and select Paste. Now, if we take a look at our watercolor stain 2, you see we applied the same effect with the same settings. Now let's come in here and change this color to something maybe like a little bit of a bluish tint that we have a little bit of more interesting variations in here, something like that a little bit darker, a little bit more saturated. Okay, so let's say I'm satisfied with this. Now, as a last step of this video, let's copy this effect here. Let's go to Ctrl C. Let's select our brush layer. Let's press Ctrl V on our keyboard to paste it in. And let's change this color to a very dark color. So let's say a little bit of violet, but really, really dark, so that it nearly appears as black, something like that. Okay, now I'm satisfied with my layout so far, so I can save my project, I come up here, go to File, and now in this case, I will just use the increment and save function, and After Effects will create my project one underscore five project, and now I save this to a new file. In the next video, we will take a look how we can add some text to this layout and how we can work with fonts and After Effects.